I get this question on a regular basis. A son receives double the share of a daughter under the Sharia. Why? In pre-Islamic Arabia, only males inherited. This was soon to be changed by the divine message carried by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when the companion, Aus ibn Thabit, passed away. He was survived by a wife, three daughters, and two nephews. Consistent with pre-Islamic custom, as the surviving males, the nephews proceeded to take the entire estate. Aus ibn Thabit's wife complained to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that her and the daughters not receiving a share of the estate was not just. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said to give him some time to consider the issue. Shortly thereafter, Surat al-Nisa was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, which required as a matter of divine directive that females inherit. With this revelation, the Qur'an changed the male tribal-centric rules of inheritance to become anchored in gender equity. While it is true that the daughter receives half of the share of her brother, the economic structures of the pre-modern period and the Sharia financial obligations of males towards females in Arabian society warranted this distribution. But females do not always inherit less than their male counterparts. There are a few scenarios where a female inherits equal to that of a male, where a decedent is survived by two daughters, a father and a mother, for example. The daughters receive two-thirds of the estate, and the parents receive one-sixth each. Furthermore, if a decedent leaves a husband, two daughters, and parents, daughters inherit more than the male beneficiaries. In this case, daughters are entitled to two-thirds of the decedent's estate, and they take more than the shares of the husband and father. Moreover, in the case where a decedent leaves a paternal grandmother and maternal grandfather as beneficiaries, the paternal grandmother inherits and the maternal grandfather does not. As we can see, it is not entirely accurate to conclude that Islamic law of inheritance discriminates against women in all cases. In fact, in some cases, Islamic law discriminates against males. The development of Islamic law granted females tremendous financial and legal rights. According to Islamic law, a female has independent legal status. Therefore, she has the right to own, manage, and dispose of property. A wife's property and earnings are the wife's separate property. A husband does not have a legal or equitable claim to his wife's assets. Conversely, however, females have a legal and equitable claim against the property of their male relatives. A wife, for example, has a claim for support from her husband's property. Similarly, female relatives have a right to support from male relatives. Nafaqat al-aqarib. This includes sisters, aunts, grandmothers, all have a claim for support from their brothers, uncles, and other male relatives. In other words, male relatives were legally obligated to support their female relatives, whether it be a daughter, a wife, a mother, an aunt, a sister, or grandmother. Males, on the other hand, did not have any claim for support from female relatives. In light of these extensive financial obligations to female relatives, Islamic law of inheritance, in a few limited circumstances, allocated double the share to male beneficiaries to assist them to meet their Sharia financial obligations. Today, many American Muslims argue that in the United States, Muslim females are working and earning income, sometimes more than their male counterpart. Living under American law, Muslim males do not have the same legal obligations to support their female relatives as they did under the Sharia. Additionally, the extended family is disappearing and being replaced with the nuclear family, further eroding the extended male financial obligations to females in our society. Based on these tangible social and economic changes in Muslim American communities, many scholars have suggested that if you feel your female relatives will not be protected by their male relatives, it may be advisable and a good idea to gift property to the female relatives during your lifetime. It is also possible to discuss these financial obligations with your male children and recommend that they reduce their inheritance share in favor of their sisters. By doing these simple steps, Muslim Americans preserve the moral spirit of the Qur'an and comply with their faith while living under the new reconstituted family structures in modernity. Visit shariawiz.com to prepare your state-specific, Sharia-compliant, legally valid estate plan, and let everyone know your wishes.